Good evening and welcome to Botkins High School, where tonight WSM brings you a non-conference matchup from the Midwest Athletic Conference to Fort Recovery Indians and from the Shelby County Athletic League, the Botkins Trojans. My name is Mark Scheiss. My pleasure to do play-by-play. -play. Beside me, my good friend Jerry Snodgrass. And Jerry, this is one of those good non-conference matchups on a Saturday night. You know, we said from the moment we walked in this gym, where everybody in the communities are here, and, and it adds to the environment so much. It's what high school basketball is all about. And you're right, two good rivalries, some good talent on the floor, should be a great game. Should be a great game. Let's go through the starting lineups. First of all, for Fort Recovery, Jerry, and then you can kind of give us a synopsis of the Fort Recovery Indians. We know of four starters. Number 10, Troy Holman, a six foot junior, averaging 2.2 points per game. Number 12 is Rex Leverett, 6'4", junior, at 3.2. 21 is Daniel Pat, 6'7", senior, four points a game. And number 22 is K.O. Rammel, 6'5", senior, at 24.6 a game and 6.9 rebounds. The fifth starter, Jerry, is typically landing post. He is out with an injured foot. We're not sure who will take this place this evening. You're kind of your feeling for what will happen before recovery tonight. Well, you know, one, they've got size. So does Botkins. And, and you know, they're 8-1. and one, And I, I love their balance. You know, they're experienced, and I just think it's going to be a, a great effort on their part with all their balance, scoring, and that size. All right, let's go through the Botkins Trojans. They will start number zero, Carter Plyman, 6'5", senior, 19.7 points per game, 7.3 rebounds, 3 assists. Number three is J.J. Meyer, 5'5", junior, at 3.9. 21, Brandon Berger, 6'2", senior, at 3.1. 24, George Hersog, 6'4", junior, 8.3, and 5 rebounds. And number 42 is Colton Plyman, a 6'4 sophomore, two and a half points, two and a half rebounds. They did not play last night. Fort Recovery did. How about the Botkins Trojans, Jerry? Well, you know, I think for one, I think that night off is going to help them quite a bit. I, this is one of those things where, you know, high school basketball, you're itching to play every night. They didn't play last night, so they're really eager to get at. I'm really interested to see Carter Plyman. You know, a lot of good statistics and... You know, I've heard so many good things about him, and I've seen them through the years. So, again, another prime and playing. But, you know, they do have some youngsters that they're playing. And I think, you know, they're starting to mature and starting to really come together. I think this is a pivotal game for them. You know, Jerry, I got a wild idea. If it goes overtime, let's just play one-on-one -on -one between Carter Plyman at 19.7, K.O. Ramble at 24.6, and we'll let them play one-on-one -on -one and finish this one out because those two guys are excellent basketball players. You know, absolutely they are, and I think that's what a lot of people are here to see. We've got two very skilled, very talented players, and that, again, is going to make tonight very special. Our officials tonight are Joe Turner, Chris Bradstrom and Adam Dove. We have given you the starting lineups. Minus one guy. We'll fill in when we get back. And we will have basketball coming up right after this. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at Boston High School. Mark Shine and Jerry Snodgrass. And Jerry, before we get into this basketball game, we had a couple of eighth grade young ladies perform the national anthem, and I know you started doing some things like that at the OHSAA state tournament. It is a blessing to hear young voices sing like that, isn't it? It really is, and you know, you look at how, you know, involvement by kids. It's not just these players on the floor. It's the cheerleaders, it's the, those that are singing, it's the student sections, all of that. Again, I just keep saying it's what makes high school sports great. It, it, it is kind of a, it's what, you know, a learning experience is all about when you talk about those young ladies and what they learned this evening. Well, we do know who the fifth starter will be tonight for the Fort Recovery Indians. That will be number two, Riggs Toby. Riggs is a 6'1 junior. He averages about two and a half points per game on the season. Also, we've had a change in the original starting lap that was given us from the Botkins Trojans. They will start number one tonight, and that would be Colin Dosick, and he will replace J.J. Meyer in the starting lineup. Colin Dosick is a 5'8 sophomore. He averages a little, a little under five points per game. Got the lights out in the gym. It's unique uh, introduction type thing, Jerry, that, uh, that we see sometimes when we go places and just kind of adds to the spark. And, you and I were talking the last time we were in this gym. You sat right <laughs> over there in that student section on Hawaiian night. Yep, talk about uh, student sections and talk about the good old golden megaphone that I was so proud of. Got a lot of national attention with that. Not me, but the group. You know, just the uh, student involvement, yes. you know, and theme nights. And uh, 
I walk in, they handed me a lei around yeah. my neck and a shirt, and I was part of the student section for Hawaiian night. Yeah, when we were short one color person, you spent about half the first quarter. I did. <laughs> <laughs> had, a, had a great time, and I know those students had, uh, were happy to have you be a, a part of that as well, that particular evening. And, that golden megaphone was one of the best things that happened across the state of Ohio. That was a I good really, thing. I really did like that. You know, we incorporated that with the National Anthem Singers and yep. also our Military Appreciation Night right. that we had. That's going to be coming up here in another couple of weeks across the state, isn't it? If, I don't know. I don't think they still no, do we it. we don't push that no, anymore, they do don't. we? No, That's too bad, too. Well, before we get to this, let's talk about our scoreboard sponsor to this evening. It is Wabash Mutual Telephone. Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. The 8-2 Fort Recovery Indians coming off a loss last night to Delphus and St. John's. Botkins played on Tuesday. They are 5-4, and four and we are underway. And this tip goes into the hands of Daniel Patch. Side pass Rex Leverett. He's going to get a screen. Leverett goes to the rim and scores. Well, that just shows you right there, right off the bat, the strength. You know, he's under pressure in that. Picked up on the inside like that and still able to get that off. There's a little 1-3-1 one, one zone. Now the point guard is Carter Plyman at 6-5. And Steele never tips it into the hands of Riggs Toby. And this will be K.O. Rammel, the leading scorer on the team. Leverett for three. Look out. Whoa. Looks like it's going to be Rex Leverett's night. He's I got guess. this. That's his third one of those on the season. Here's that 1-3-1 one, one trap again. Boy, is that a big 1-3-1 one, one to go against. It is. Toby is a 6-1. He plays on top of it. Patch at 6-7 in the middle. Rambles on the baseline at 6-5. Leverett is a 6-4 on one wing. And the little guy, quote, little guy in the lineup is Troy Holman at just six foot. Yeah, a lot of times you'll see that little guy playing on the baseline, going baseline to baseline, but... You know, they've got the big guy inside and obviously want to control the boards that way pretty well, too. Burgers three missed. Here comes Kale Ramble to walk the ball up the floor. Penetrates into the lane. Here's Leverett again for three. A little heat check from him. And the rebound into the hands of Carter Plyman. Here's a pass ahead to the rim and not able to finish inside was Herzog. And they're going the other way. Herzog goes to the rim and will draw the first foul of the game. That will go against, is that 21, wasn't it? Brandon Berger. Yep. You talk about that 1-3-1 one, one there that Botkins is going against, and, you know, one of the best ways, and they tried that time, beat it down the court. That's one of the best ways to beat any defense. Troy Holman will be the inbounder. Throws it at top to Ramble. Kale, turnaround jumper is short, and the rebound to Herzog. Berger on top, pass to the corner, jumper out of the corner, and battle for the rebound on the backside, and it will go to Fort Recovery as Dosik missed out of the corner. And that's where the shots come from so often. You're going to get that corner shot against the 1-3-1. Here's Troy Holman to walk the ball up the floor. Fort Recovery scores it at 50 points per game. They give up 43.9. A lot of close wins for them this evening, in this season. It's Pat. Baseline Holman, and Holman reverse layup. Nope, tip up. Ramble can't score. Rebound to Plyman. Carter Plyman. It's a big point guard out there running that show. Averages three assists a game to go along with his over seven rebounds and almost 20 points per game. Botkin scores it at 48 points a game, and uh, Carter Plyman averages 19.7 of them. Penetration dribble kick out. This will be Plyman for three. And the rebound ripped down on the backside by Rammel. And you have to believe if you're, uh, if you're Fort, Fort Recovery, you know, take away Plyman. <laughs> You've got a pretty good chance of winning. Holman, penetration dribble. Ramble comes off the screen, pulls up from 17. Good looking shot that doesn't fall, and Colton Plyman rebound. You know, you're right. That's a good looking shot. You know, came off that screen a little bit and had that open jumper and just great form, just didn't fall. 
Ball reversal. Climbing. Ball is up into the corner of Herzog's hands. His three is off the rim and into the hands of Leverett. Here's Leverett with the basketball and then Toby. <coughs> Pass inside. This is Patch. Daniel gives it up. Leverett work, works and his turnaround jumper goes. He has got all seven points in the basketball game. You're right. I think it's his night. It is. But that's one thing. They do have good balance. And, you know, sooner or later, you know, they're going to stop him, you know, try to keep the ball out of his hands a little bit. He got other good Bounce scores. Pass inside. Another good pass, and that ends up in the hands of Colton Plyman, who has the first basket for the Trojans this evening. Get to Leverett in a hurry that time. Look inside to Patch. Patch working on Plyman. Ramble's trying to post up now. Works, works, powers up. Nope, good defensive play. Yeah. Had the rebound too, didn't he? It's a good job of playing defense in there and not fouling. What do we call that now, Coach? Walling up? Yep. That's what we call it. Here's Plyman on top. His team trails by five in a very quick opening quarter. We've got five minutes of this one already. Well, you have to attribute some of that to great officiating tonight. And we were talking about that before the game, how their commissioner, Stan Evans, you know, a former official himself, gets some great officials from all over the state to come here in the Shelby County League. Got multiple substitutions in. Number two, Ryland Paul. Number three, J.J. Meyer. And number 23, Noah Top. All into the basketball game for Botkins. Same starting lineup in the basketball. No, they brought number four, Alex Dews right. in. Missed that at that exchange right there. It's Dews with the basketball there. They are missing tonight. Landon Post averaging 8.6 points per game. Has a foot injury they hope is minor and can get him back in the not too distant future. Pat with the basketball. Botkin's defensive people appreciate what's going on right here. Here's Ramble working inside and tips the ball to Pat. Here's Patch for three. Deuce fights on the backside for the rebound and keeps it alive for his teammate, Toby. Well, I'm impressed with Fort Recovery and their, their foot movement. You know, they're so quick to the ball. They, they seems like they're getting their hands on about every loose ball, every rebound. Here's Deuce, and now Rammel. Rammel kick out, pass. This will be a three ball by Homan. Patch rebounds on the backside as he rips it away from. Nope, got a held ball, right? He got tied up inside along with Noah Top, and the ball will go to Botkins. Here's Carter Plyman walking the ball up the floor. What recovery stays in that 1 3 1? And... Plyman deep three. His 14th of the year for Carter Plyman. You know, he says, if you're going to give that to me, I'm going to take it. Cuts the lead to two. Under a minute to go. All man-to-man -man right now by Botkins. There's Holman off the screen. Works to the lane and almost had the and one opportunity. Still going to get to go to the free throw line. The foul will go to J.J. Meyer. Here's Ramble to the free throw line. No, it's not Ramble, excuse me. It is uh, Holman to the free throw line. You know, I talked about the balance for Botkins, you know, and what, what I've seen so far is they're just great offensive ability by every player on the floor, too, by foot recovery. They're just very, very good basketball players. Here's Leverett back in the game. He will replace Rich Toby. Back to the free throw line for the second opportunity is Holman. 57% free throw shooter on the season. And that one does it go as it bounces around, ends up in Carter Plyman's hands. You know, I keep thinking, 
Carter Plyman is a, a point guard. He's not. He's a basketball player. Yeah. That, yeah put put him wherever you today. need him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Deep three bounces around the rim and packs rebounds. Let's see if the recovery Indians choose to play last shot of a very rapid first quarter. You know, Mark, I think about that so often when they talk about players that you know play at a guard position or they're a forward or yeah. whatever it might be. No, they're a basketball player. Ramble trying to work inside, cannot get the ball back, deep three. Ramble short. Rebound into the hands of Herzog, the long throw. This is everything. Opening first quarter, what recovery will take a two-point lead to the break after eight minutes. You watch the high school basketball on WOSN. The man in the green shirt you're taking a look at, that is Jacob Plyman. He is now playing at the Division II University of Tiffin, a first-team All-Ohio player in 2022 and a state champion, Jerry. Yep, and I believe next week, I think they're putting that jersey up on the wall. Yeah, and they are. As, if you look at that, quite a few thousand-point-plus scores, so that's certainly an honor here to have your jersey uh, replica put up on the wall. Tiffin University doesn't play today, so he's here to watch brothers Carter and Colton. Another player off that uh, state tournament team. Um, the guard that plays at, at uh, uh, Jacob Pretty Great. is uh, playing at Concordia. And on the 18th of this month, they will be at UNOH to play if you want to go catch him. And you, know, Mark, for we, Concordia. and you know, we were talking about Division II and Division III basketball mm. in the NCAA and just how unbelievably good it is. Good defense inside. Put back doesn't go and eventually secured by Kleiman. Ramble's been defended very well. And the rim. Then we got a blocking foul. It's only an one for Jordan Herzog. Well, and you can tell that rebounding's the key to it, but Botkins really wants to get that ball out and go with it. The foul went to Holman. That would be the first foul on him because it is the first foul of the game <laughs> for the uh, Fort Recovery. And that's one thing that 1 3 1 can do is keep you out of foul yeah. trouble. Herzog shoots 70% the free throw line by sneaking in and grabbing the rebound. Is JJ Meyer at 5 5. Sorry, that's that's called Dosik at 5'8", sneak, sneaking in to grab the rebound. So we're tied at 7. Plyman. Herzog, <laughs> top of the circle. And we'll travel. You know, at 1 3 1, you know, as, as big as it is, it's just, you know, 7 7 right now. It's just difficult to get an easy shot out of it. That it is. Here, gave you the score. Our scoreboard today is sponsored by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Appreciate their support this evening. It's tied at 7. Here's Ramble trying to work against Plyman. Plyman's done a really good job against him so far. That ball is tipped loose in the corner, thrown back into the hands of J.J. Meyer. He's off to the races. Fort Recovery does a good job of getting back into that, too. That was the ball right there a moment ago. Colin Dosick is the one who made the play in the corner and tipped it to Meyer. They've got that uh, spread out way out on the floor right now. Meyer goes inside with it. Dosik, skip pass. Another move to the goal, and almost a good finish inside by Ryland Paul. Jordan Herzog picks up the rebound foul. His first, team's third. Patch back in the game. Both players, use, or both teams, using their benches very, very well. And Again, I suppose, too, if you're Fort Recovery, you played last night. You know, that's a, a very valuable thing here as we get later in the game. Leverett at seven points, all seven points in the opening quarter for Fort Recovery, and that one didn't go. What a rebound by Plyman. 
he's just so athletic, you know. You got that size like that, you know, you can, like you said, he's a basketball player. He's not, he's not a point guard, he's a basketball player. Rex Leverett picks up his first foul. Next week, Jerry, we get to see uh, New Bremen. They've got a young man named David Holman, one of the best football players and a good basketball player for New Bremen. Had about a zillion tackles this year. And I asked him, where's he play at? And uh, one of the coaches said he tackles. <laughs> so that shot's missed out of the corner, and the rebound ends up going to the purple team, the Fort Recovery Indians. I was blessed to be able to cover New Bremen a couple times in football, and so impressed. I'm so impressed by where where they've come, yeah. you know, through the years. Special edition next week of basketball. Jerry, Mark Miller is going to join us, going to come all the way across the state from Canton. And we will have New Bremen at Marion Local, a Friday night contest on WOSN. There's Leverett's long three. Oh, nice rebound to keep it in was Toby, and it was taken away from him. Here comes Botkins the other way. Three on two, and he lost it. Yeah, I don't think he got tripped. I think he just... It, I would agree. He's gone pretty pretty fast down the court. I think his tennis shoe just got... Ram will pull up jumper. Got. That's hard. Another rebound for Toby. Here's Patch for three. What recovery's gone cold. And in the scramble for the ball in the corner, we'll go to Botkins. Number 23, Noah Top enters, as does number 42, Colton Plyman. That little sequence there, both ends of the court, got a little bit out of, a little bit out of sync with everybody. Almost saw a tackle on the sideline okay. over there. Plyman gets the screen. They're going to screen that top guy. They're going to screen, you know, Toby quite a bit, trying to get that, you know, pick up and overload a little quicker and get an easier shot. Pass inside. It's Herzog, and he's going to work. And lean in. Patch blocks the shot. We're headed the other way. To the rim. Left-handed shot is a little strong, and Herzog rebounds. Back we go the other way. This will be a jumper out of the corner by top. Nope. Hanged out front, however. We've Colin been stuck Dosick. on 7-7 seven, seven seven quite a long, time. a long time here. Yep. Well, there have been a couple of open looks, Jerry, but every shot right. really has been contested for the most part. Skip pass. Climbing goes baseline, and the finishes. Points four and five for Carter Climbing. His team takes their first lead. Patch posted up inside. Works hard, a little runner in the lane. Bang to Leverett, and he got that one to go. After having a seven-point opening quarter, Rex Leverett now has nine. Leverett's shot there. I still think that's one of the toughest shots in basketball. That little five, six, four-footer, you know, that just, it's got to be soft enough. Can't use the board. Climbing misses from the volleyball line. Kale Rammel, the only Fort Recovery Indian to score tonight has been Rex Leverett. Holman, Troy trying to come off the screen. Rammel tries to get to the lane and draws a foul. And Jerry, we were kind of expecting that. This yep. guy is, is averaging nine free throw attempts per game. We were talking about, what, 84 or something on the year? Yep. Wow. And if you're having trouble scoring a basketball, let's go yeah. to basket and draw contact. Just a 60% free throw shooter on the season. One of those kind of oddities for somebody who scores the basketball so well. Made 11 three-point field goals and rolls in his first free throw and his first point tonight. You wonder sometimes, you know, but I guess that all explains how mental the, the game of basketball, special free throw shooting really is. That one bounces around. It also goes on. Yeah, Rammel has two, and his team has 11 in a two-point lead. And they're sticking with that 1-3-1 one, one zone, and why not? It's been pretty effective tonight. They move Plyman into the post, though. Right there. 
Here's a jumper out of the corner by Top. Rebound on the backside to Dews. You know, I mentioned earlier about, you know, the 1-3-1, you know, giving up a shot in the corner, and that's their fourth shot attempt from actually the left side, too. Here's a lob inside to Patch. And he's going to roll into the lane, little baby hook. Nope. Battle for the rebound. Holman got that one. Kept alive, however, by Toby, who seems to get his hands on every basketball you can find tonight. He does. Here's Rammel. Holman ends up with that pass after a deuce had some good eyes. The game has been incredibly physical. Yes, it has. Spin in the lane, jumper no, rebound. Eventually falls to Noah Top. Here comes Botkins the other way, headed to the rim, and shot the ball a little bit hard was Colin Dosick, and then the rebound goes off a teammate. Uh, trying to get the ball down quick, trying to beat that 1-3-1, one, one, but sometimes they get in a bad spot where they're just going a little too fast. Here's Botkins going to pick up some man-to-man. And then they're going to back up a little bit, just kind of challenge them at midcourt. Lob pass inside, and oh, tough shot inside, but a good rebound by Toby. Patch for three, hard. And we're going to get a rebound foul that will go against Fort Recovery. Like Leverett gets that one. And Rex Leverett picks up his second foul with a minute 22 to go here in the opening half. You know, Daniel Patchett, that's a second or third three he's uh, taken. Good looking shot. One of those is going to drop for him. Six, seven, that's a yep. good, good skill and a good weapon to have. Swinging around. Got both Plymans in now. Carter's playing in high post. There's a jumper out of the corner and a three one. ball. That will go for Noah Top. His team leads again 12-11 as we're under a minute to go. Leverett works inside and he just picked up yeah. foul number three on an offensive foul and a well-defended play. Talked about the game being physical, you know, and so much body contact, but it was there. He had to get him off of him and he used the forearm to do it. Check out our website, WSN.TV, for scores and standings for sports and teams than anyone else in the state. Check our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more on WOSN.TV. See if the Botkins Trojans play last shot of the opening half. Patch has moved up in his 1-3-1 to challenge Carter Plyman. You know, Mark, other than this possession, you know, people are gonna look at this score Great drive. Yeah, good pass. Plyman gets his own rebound, goes back up, and gonna draw contact. Go ahead, Jerry. Well, people are gonna look at this score, 12, 11. Okay, we've got to have the shot clock. Yeah. You know, other than that possession, and even there, right? They didn't take any more time off than, and they haven't either time. It's just been good defense, good physical game, and the shot clock wouldn't have made any difference in this. Except maybe they could take a bad shot against a good one for one yes. defense yes. Or, or a good half-court man. That ball bounces around and rolls in for Carter Plyman's sixth point. He's a 68% free throw shooter on the season. And left that one a bit short. Rebound into the hands of Toby. So with a two-point lead, Botkins will defend the final possession of the first half. Ramble. Ramble gets it stripped. Goes back up again. Bounces off the back of the rim. 16 minutes in the books. Batkins 13, Fort Recovery 11. Second half coming up after this. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at Batkins High School, where tonight our scoreboard is presented by Walmart's Mutual Telephone. Proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Buck Shine and Jerry Snodgrass. Uh, Fort Recovery quarter scores of seven and four. They have two players who scored tonight. Rex Leverett with nine. Dale Rammel with two. Uh, 
On the other side, Botkin quarter scores of five and eight. They have 13 points. Plus, the scoring is very well balanced. Carl Plyman has six, three for Brant Berger, two for Jordan Herzog, two for Cole Plyman. Your thoughts on the second half, Jerry? Well, you know, one, they're going to have to find a way to beat that 1-3-1. One, one. And I know in the, in the uh, Botkins is, and I know the first half they were trying to get the ball down quick. You know, that's how you beat it. But it's also causing them a lot of mistakes. You know, a lot of shots that were just not probably the best shots or under pressure, so on and so forth. So, you know, they're going to have to find a way to do that. I wondered if um, I was waiting all through the first half to see, well, maybe they'll come out in the second quarter for recovery and maybe switch up defenses. Mm -hmm. Why would you? Yeah. I mean, why? and there's right there in a 1-3-1 again. You can't blame them. The so I think that's inside. a big key. Botkins is going to have to find a way to beat There's it. a deep three. Ramo rebounds. And we'll give the basketball up to Troy Holman, who will walk it up. Typical man-to-man -man we've seen from the Botkins this evening. Rammel's going to get a screen and then patch at the top of the circle. They're trying to go inside to Rammel against Plyman, and Plyman overplays and gets a steal. Length to the floor. Plyman goes to the rim and scores. Nice move. Well, you know, I mentioned that about Botkins, you know, trying to beat that 1-3-1, one, one, but, you know, then again, they're ahead. Yep. And, you know, that's the other way. Get ahead, and they'll come out of that. Carter Plyman had eight points in the game. He was one for two from the free throw line in the first half. And we're going to hand one opportunity here that bounces out, and Rammel rebounds. Saturday night basketball. Got recovery, eight and two. Botkins, five and four. Botkins has won the last two matchups between these two teams in 2021 and in 2022. Both of them relatively close scores. And they lead by four in this one. Pull up jumper short. Rebound to Jordan Hersog. And here comes Kleiman the other way. You know, that's been a big key for Botkins, too, is holding uh, Fort Recovery to one shot. Uh, that's early on. That wasn't the case. Kleiman, corner look. Here's a three. And that three ball goes for the left-handed Brent Berger. And he has his first basket, the seventh three of the season. And all of a sudden, it's a seven-point lead. And that time, it looked like Fort Recovery was in a 2-3. Now, it may have just have shifted to give that appearance, but it looked like they were in a 2-3 zone. Ramble works inside, spin, patch for three. Yeah, and I said it. sooner or later he'd hit that. Yeah. Patch for three, timeout for recovery, timeout WSN. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Out of town, I can't get WSN. WSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. A $100 donation allows you to watch it anywhere in the world. Visit app.wsn.tv to sign up. A flurry of action. Five points in the quarter for the Botkins Trojans. A three now for what recovery is going to stay in there. One, three, one, it looks like. First time out of the game was taken by Coach Bob Leverett of the Fort Recovery. Here's another three. Back to back. Grant Berger lights the lamp again. Well, I said they're going to have to figure that out, and they put their people in the right spot, you know, to force an overload, and it's hard to pick him up. Really good job by Phil Groves coming out of the halftime break. His team's got eight here in the first two and a half minutes of quarter number three. Here's a three ball. That's short, and trying to track down his own rebound was Dews, and so he throws it to a Trojan. Heat check, number three. Yep, three in a row, Brand Berger. When you're averaging three points a game and you made six threes on the year and you nailed three in three minutes, that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that's, coaches are just smiling on that one. Here's Rammel trying to get himself on track as he's been defended very well this evening. Backs Plyman down and Plyman strips it to a draw foul. Carter Plyman's first foul. He has done a good job in there. Yes, he has. Almost, uh, official had his back to it, but uh, couldn't see it, but 
almost looked like an offensive foul right before that. Kale Ramwell had 19 last night and lost to Dolphins St. John's. He's got three today all from the free throw line. And left that one short. Ball's tipped out. How many times has Alex Dews got his hands on the ball tonight? Yeah. And it's going to go out of bounds off of what recovery. You know, that's that skill that I think a lot of people overlook is just that, that ball sense. You know, you know where the ball's coming off. And I think that's a, John Wooden used to be so big on that. You know, of, you know, rebounders weren't just the guys that can jump. They were the guys that knew that every, they expected every shot to be missed. Daniel Patch just picked up his second foul. You and I have both coached kids like that, you yep. know, that they just have that sense that they have the innate sense that every shot that goes up, they figure it's going to be missed, and they know where it's coming off. It's just chart in high school basketball. There's another three. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he's got four in the quarter. 12 points all from the three line, point line. Brant Berger. This team's up 12. Just chart it, Jerry. How many rebounds high school basketball rebounded below the rim? Yeah, right. Almost every yeah, one of yep. them. It, it's not that leaper. It's the guy who gets off the floor quick, who's got strength and timing, and as you say, the want to and desire to go get it. There's another foul inside. That also will go against Carter Plyman. It also puts Cam Ramble back to the free throw line. Offensive rebounders are just a skill. I mean, it's just a, and it's something you just love when you're a coach. There's Ramble from the free throw line, and that will roll around. Seems like a lot of his free throws have bounced around the rim tonight and fallen in. Point four for him. And now five. Well, you know what? When the field goals won't roll for you, get yourself to the free throw yeah. line, and Kale Ramble is very good at that. Six free throw attempts for him tonight. He's made five. Cuts the lead to ten. This is Plyman trying to go baseline and tried to throw it cross court to his brother and it got tipped out of bounds. He has a nice little jab move with the ball over there. You know, he's a hard, yeah. a difficult player to defend. You know, you, you, the and it, ball fakes. And as you said, Fort Recovery got shot out of their zone. They're playing man now. Yep. Here's a pass inside. Colton Plyman thought about it and did not, and they reset. Here's the reason they're out of the zone right there. That guy right there has made four threes in the quarter in about four minutes. 24, Jordan Herzog. Patch has given him a lot of room on that inside. There's Carter Plyman working against Patch on the switch. Yep, telling him to go baseline, let him take him one-on-one. -on -one. That's what they're trying to do. Uh, skip pass is stolen by Kale Ramble. He's headed to the rim. Kale Ramble will draw the third foul of yeah. the quarter on Carter Plyman. Switched the ball the opposite hand, Jerry, and drew contact. Yes, he did. Did a nice job of doing that, too. And all of a sudden, Carter Plyman becomes the first Botkin Trojan with three personal fouls. Rex Leverett has three for Fort Recovery Indians. Here's Ramble back to the free throw line. Six of seven, looking at number eight coming up right here. Yeah, that's the best way to whittle away at it. Clock stop. Clock stop. And that one is dead center. He seven has a nice eight. touch. He does. He has a very smooth shot. Seven out of eight from the free throw line, cuts the lead to eight. And they went back one, three, one. And that ball's tipped loose. Bounce pass tried to go across the lane. Kale Ramble got his hands on another ball. Patch for three. Daniel Patch has made two threes in the quarter and cuts the lead to five. Well, you wonder why that big 6'7 guy standing out there on top of the key. There it is. Because he can flat out do that. I think they went boxing one on Herzog. Yeah, I think they did too. They put number four. Alex Dews on Herzog. Now he switches off of him. Yeah, they're just switching everything, maybe. Yeah, they are. It looks they're like switching it. everything. Here's pass across court. Hand on that. Pass inside Plyman. This will be a three. 
Through ball, that time Berger gets another one. Five of them in the quarter. Reminds He's got to remember this. Oh, is he ever. Eight point lead, reminds me of a young man who played in that state championship team, Jamison Meyer yes. here. Ramble shot misses that time, Prime and rebounds, heads the other way. Here's a three, that'll go up by Herzog, bounces around, and the rebound. <laughs> How about that? How about that? Good hustle play by Dosik. And then we get a hold inside. Dosik just timed that right, you know, it yep. took a pretty high bounce, and Okay, Rich Toby picked up that foul, his first. Each team has three fouls for the team's sake in the second half. J.J. Meyer back in the game. That's him with the basketball there, and then Carter Plyman. There's a swing around, there's a three. Finally missed one. <laughs> Almost a surprise. Sure can't fault him for taking it. Rammel kicks over to Holman. Holman goes to the rim and will draw a foul. Holman will get to the line. That foul goes to J.J. Meyer, his second. Right. Holman missed a couple of free throws in the first quarter and is scoreless tonight. And right now, the free throws are just keeping, they're keeping yes. Fort Recovery into the game. Five of six in the quarter. Six of seven in the quarter. One more for Troy Holman. The free WSN scores app is the easiest way to follow high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores in WSN. Search WSN in the App Store or the Android Play Store. And that one back of the rims it and comes to Noah Top. Sat at home last night, watched Shawnee in defiance on WSN, looked at my scores app the whole night. Yep, that's <laughs> too easy to do, isn't yeah, it? It, is, it really uh, yeah. is. Got yep. a great game last night, Shawnee and Defiance live on WSN, the scores app. I had a great evening. There's movements. There's Meyer into the lane, bounce pass. Here's Plyman. Carter Plyman's shot does it go. The rebound comes to Toby, and Riggs is fouled by. And you know, not in the one, they're yeah. not in the bonus yet, but still. Jordan Herzog picks up his third foul. Ryland Paul at 5'10", replaces Colton Plyman at 6'4". Also checking in. Looks like Russell Lenhart, I believe. Okay. They're leaving Colton Plyman in here in the, the three fouls. I thought maybe they'd sit him out on the defensive end. It's one of those where you trust your guy, don't you? Yeah, you sure do. Here's a movement to the goal, and Holman goes off glass and scores. Points two and three for him, cuts the lead to five, and gradually Fort Recovery is getting back into this. Probably last shot time here in quarter number three, which has been a scoring quarter compared to our other two tonight. Bramwell comes out to challenge, gets the count going. Now he's not going to try to keep climbing from getting it back. Ball stripped loose. Yeah, and off his foot. Good play by Alex Dews, but it will stay with Botkins at 10.8 to go. Yeah, putting, I think they're going to sub in some offensive players yeah. here. I think because Brant Berger's checking in, and he's got 15 points in the quarter. Jordan Herzog stepping in as well. Dews is playing Carter Plyman right here. This will be a three out of the corner, and ringing that one up will be Ryland Paul. Flurry of three-point field goals here in quarter number three for the Bachman Trojans, and they will take a 33-25 lead to the fourth for watching high school basketball on WSN. Fourth quarter coming up from Botkins, where our scoreboard is presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone. Proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Botkins with a 20 to 14 quarter. Jerry, because they made six three-point field goals. Yeah, it's, it's going to do it every time. And there for a while, got him out, got uh, what recovery out of that zone. 
Watkins had made 44 three-point field goals in their nine games, so almost five per game, and they had six in that quarter. They've got eight in the game tonight. You know, as we start this um, fourth quarter, one thing I wanted to mention, I know we won't be able to get her on camera, but the athletic trainer for Botkins, Jennifer Fry. You know, we saw so much this last week, the importance of athletic trainers, and, you know, she deserves a lot of credit. There's a lot of burnout in that field, and they're a critical factor in high schools right now that uh, people sometimes just don't recognize and take for granted. That is absolutely true. High school trainers, some of them were employed by schools, others come from hospitals and medical facilities around to help supply them. But we saw certainly this week how important those individuals are. We get an offensive foul. You know, not to belabor the point, but during, for about 10 years, I oversaw the training that coaches are required. Almost 70,000 coaches in the state of Ohio, and I oversaw that. And uh, can't take that lightly because Trainers are not required to be at games. Right. So, you know, you're talking those junior high games, those freshman games. There's oftentimes not an athletic trainer there. Coaches need to be certified. That ball is passed. The patch could not handle. goes out of bounds. Neither team has scored here in the first 50 seconds. Brent Berger has 15, all from the three-point line, and all in the quarter number three. Kale Rammel has, looks like, a seven, I guess. There's a shot that goes up, and we're going to get a foul. We're going to get a charge. And four means Alex Hughes gets the foul. Daniel Patch had two three-point field goals in quarter number three as well. It's Dew's first foul to the free throw line. We'll go Jordan Herzog, a 70% free throw shooter. And Jerry, I want to throw a prop out to both coaches. We sent some requests out for rosters and stats, yes. and we're back in a heartbeat. Part of it, uh, like Joe Plyman here at Botkins. You know, one of those special guys. He just wants to help out and yep. does a lot of things to make things work here at the school. And there's a lot of really good people in a lot of schools like him. There sure are. And I think that's what makes doing this so enjoyable. They're good people. You know, they're not just basketball people. They don't have special interests. They're just good people. Here's Ramble trying to work inside. Step back shot. That's his first field goal this evening. He's got nine in the game now, averaging 25 on the season, or nearly so. Trying to lead a comeback for his team that trails now by seven. He just hasn't had that many open shots. Here's a shots. three. Another three. <laughs> Brant Berger, 18 in the game, all from the arc and all in the second half. Puts that lead back up to 10. I think his previous high was eight. I'm pretty I, sure. I think that's correct. He came into the game averaging three points per game and had made six three-point field goals in their opening nine games. He had six of them tonight here in the second half with about 10 minutes of action. You know, when you're sitting there and scouting, looking at scouting reports, and it's like, okay, where did yeah. this guy come from? Jordan Herzog just picked up foul number four and will head to the bench and be replaced by Colton Plyman. Herzog's got the three in the game. And Ramel missed that free throw. Could have got him to double figures. Yeah, and they, they need that. They yeah. needed that. There's a man to man. Yep. Great ball movement by Botkins. Take it side to side, looking inside, backdoor cuts. Here's Carter Plyman. The three ball that's going to go up from Paul, Rylan Paul. Boy, you can really attribute that to one, unselfish play by Carter Plyman. Unbelievable. And two, great ball movement. Ball stripped loose inside by Ramoy. Fights back up and scores. He's got 11 in the game. His coach just took timeout with 5.27 to go. And Boston's up by 11. You're watching high school basketball on WOSA.
TV44 is WSN, a nonprofit organization supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for the sports broadcast. Go to W2W.com and click donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. A pair of three-point field goals and one free throw. Seven points in the quarter for Botkins, and they have taken an 11-point lead, hence the timeout by Bob Leverett and the Fort Recovery Indians. I think you mentioned that Brent Berger was, he's only attempted 25 threes on the year. Shooting 24% from the free throw line, six of 25. He's got six here in this quarter, or six of his half. There's pressure, Holman's pressure and prime and count still on, good heads up play to pass it over. He's a smart player. You, yes, he is. I've seen those passes, you know, where he drives and he's a great scorer and he gives it up because he sees the open man. Timeout was at 527. Let's see how long before Botkins decides to put a field goal attempt up and what? Timeout. Timeout. I think, yeah. I think we do. Yep. That was a good heads up move. Yeah, that's going to be a Botkins timeout, Jerry. That was a good one. And, and the reason is he went down to the baseline yeah. and was trapped, you know, and it was a quick timeout and a very heads up job to do that. Save them a possession. That he did. Ran 26 seconds off the clock. That was their first timeout. We're in Saints season 18 of the Sports Report. Every Friday night, you can join Patrick Cameron for a full hour of the most comprehensive basketball coverage. All season long, Fridays at 10 p.m. on WTLW. When this game comes to an end, Jerry and I will take a break, get our thoughts together, and pick a Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. So we'll have a post-game show we'll do as soon as this one comes to an end. Looking ahead, Fort Recovery, they go to Coldwater next Friday. Coldwater's playing very well right now. On Saturday, they have Maumee Valley, Country Day. The 20th, they have Marion Local Home. The 21st, they go to Graham. The Botkins Trojans, they've got, uh, let me see here, Jackson Center coming up on the 20th. They lost to Jackson Center by eight. Actually, next Friday they have Fort Laramie. Next Saturday they go to Parkway. Trying to figure out who's playing who yet in that conference. Don't you like that conference where everybody plays each other home and away? Yes, I do. Yep. It's the way it ought to be. Here's a tip loose. Lever it. And he will go up and finish. He had not scored since the early part of quarter number two. That's 11 for him in the game. Ties Kale Ramble for team leadership tonight. Cut the lead to nine. There's another steal. Here's Leverett again. Patch thought about a three. And trying to get inside, running into a teammate. Oh, it was Riggs Toby. And that's so much help, I think, all the time by Botkins that nothing inside has been easy. The defense really stepping it up for the guys wearing purple tonight. They have just four team fouls. They can foul a couple more times before the one on one kicks in. Leverett has three fouls. Nobody else in foul trouble. That ball is short on one by Berger. Berger rushed a little, rushed that one a little bit. I don't think he had his feet, you know, ready to shoot it. Here's a move to the goal. Left-handed scoop by Holman will not finish. Lyman's going to throw it ahead to Dosick. Here's Carter Plyman and Dosick again. Trojans just do a good job of ball movement and you know, it takes so much time off the clock, too, and it makes every possession so valuable. This will be a three ball to go up from Dosick and bounces around. Rebound comes to Riggs Toby. Comes Fort Recovery, needing some points. Ramble trying to work inside. This will be a three. Nope, Holman pulled the trigger. Couldn't pull the trigger. And that ball's tipped from behind by Plyman. And. It's a held ball situation, and it will go to like, the Botkin Trojans. How many, you know, not just turnovers, but tied balls and, you know, forced bad shots by getting into the paint like that. There are just so many hands in there that nothing's been easy. Kosick into the lane. Here's Meyer. Carter Plyman got a size advantage. 
think the chances of Botkin taking a bad shot right yeah. now are somewhere near zero. Yeah, exactly. It's a very well-schooled team. One would expect that they will get layups and free throws before long. That's one of the things I said I was so anxious to watch Carter Plyman play, and I've not seen him force a shot. Yeah. You know, he's dribbling in there, and his hands are in there. I think that's the difference. He kicks it back out. Kale Rammel's first foul is the fifth team foul. Botkins will take it out of bounds again. Meyer to pass in. Carter Plyman. Just eight points tonight for Carter, but did a masterful job of orchestrating things. As on a move to the goal, we're going to get a foul. That will go against Riggs Toby. His Riggs is second, team six. You know, I don't want to overemphasize it, but you know, you look at how much the, the Trojans move the ball, they still aren't taking that much time off the clock. I think people miss. miss they see that differently. They think, you know, a shot clock's going to solve that. Well, they're really, they're getting a shot off within 40 seconds. They're just using all 40 seconds. Kale Ramble picks up team foul, his personal foul, number two, team foul seven. So we'll head to the free throw line. And that will put Ryland Paul there. Made a couple of threes tonight for six points. And I know, Mark, you know, you probably that way too, but, you know, as a coach, just hate playing against somebody like that, oh, you know, no. because it just, it, you know, you, it's hard to be patient on the defensive end. Very tough. You talk about patience on the offensive end, patience on defense is tough. Seventh point tonight for Ryland Paul. Play good defense, don't foul, you know. And just, in today's world, you get overly aggressive and they backdoor cut you. Yeah, exactly right. And made both of them tonight. He's got eight now in the game. The lead goes to 11. So, what's the call? We got Riggs Toby going to the glass, and we'll get a blocking call to put him to the free throw line. Biden Paul picks up his first foul. Riggs Toby's not scored tonight, but he is an 83% free throw shooter on the season. 6-1 junior. around everywhere but falling in the basket. Yeah, they need those free throws. Yes. Clock stop. Set your press up after you score. Got that one. One for two, splits the pair, cuts the lead to 10. Coach Lever urging his guys to get out and put some defensive pressure on. Got five guys on the arc. And there's a foul that will take place that will send A.J. Meyer to the free throw line one and one. Well, I think you said a little while ago that the odds of them taking a poor shot right now are slim and none. The scoreboard says that is the fifth foul against Rex Leverett. He will finish with 11. He got his team off to a good start yes. tonight. He had the first seven points of the game and finished with 11 before fouling out. Here's Meyer at the free throw line. Nailed that one. In today's world, Jerry, if you can make threes and make free throws, you win a lot of basketball yes, games. Yes, you do. And I look, I was just thinking that same thing about, at least at this point, what's the difference in the game? You know, it's those threes. Here's Pat putting it up. Holman, backdoor cut, Ramel, good catch, but it's blocked. Ooh, Carter Parker yeah. got up and Swatted it and got a body foul go against him. That will be foul number four on Carter Plyman. Showed his uh, jumping abilities, uh, Jerry, but he did, uh, you know, kind of carry into him with the body. And here's Ramble back to the free throw line. And that all came from a backdoor cut. You know, a little bit of a overplay, good solid denial defense, and he's good enough and smart enough Ramel is to go back door on it. That's how he got the shot and that's how he got fouled. 
That was free throw number 10 this evening. He has made eight of those 10. He's averaging nine free yes. throws a game, and now he's going to be number 11 right here. And rolls it in. That's point 13 for him. 145 to go. We got a 30 second timeout taken by Fort Recovery. There is no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for us to broadcast. Say thanks to viewer supported TV44 by sending a financial gift. TV44 relies on the donations of viewers to enable airing this game and other locally produced programs. Donate now at WTOW.com and click to donate. Timeout taken by Fort Recovery is timeout number three for them. And they trail by 10. And this is one of the things I don't like. Put the timeout count down to the scoreboard. 145 oh, to go. Yep. I right, had to the, count the 30 seconds down on the scoreboard clock. And finally, that, that ended, so we know now there's 145 to let go here in quarter number four. That drives you nuts sometimes as a coach, you know. It you, does. You know, you're used to it being on the clock, and then all of a sudden you look up and, wait, there's only 30 seconds left? Or, yeah, that's tough. Break the press to Botkins, but Ramble gets a tip, and... It's all he could do. Yeah, it's all he could do. Just swatted it ahead, hoping a teammate could get to it. That's a pretty nice play on his part. It was. Heads up play. I thought we got a directive a year ago not to put the timeout yeah. on the scoreboard, but that seems to have been ignored in a hurry. And we got a hold <laughs> off the ball. And I was watching the ball, and let's see who they got. Looks like they got Alex Dews for foul number two and team foul nine. And that sends Colin Dosick to the free throw line. He is scoreless this evening. This will be the final one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Fort Recovery has two timeouts for many. Botkins has four. Botkins has nine team fouls, too. So we're done shooting one-on-ones this evening after this one. Ramble rebounds. This team needs points in a hurry. And it's good steal inside, good heads up play that time by Ryland Paul. And then there'll be a foul that'll go against uh, Alex Dews. Foul number three, we'll head to the free throw line. Double bonus time. This will be Carter Plyman. You know, we've got some notes today, Jerry. I did not realize this. This young man's been in the state cross country meet oh, four yes, consecutive I, years. Yes. I knew he had been there. I just didn't realize he'd been there all four years. And also in track. He's been there in track. A couple times heading into a season that will start here in March after this season comes to an end. Yeah, what a what an accomplishment. When you look yeah, back state, on that. And state people, champion basketball? Yeah, people yeah. talk about being in the state tournament. And you can say, well, I've been there plenty of times. <laughs> and how many guys specialize in one sport and don't have that opportunity? Just, right. Right. Ramble finally gets a field goal. He worked really hard to get his points 14 and 15. His team takes time out. Well, Jerry, there's a survey came out earlier this year. Showed you about health. If you play more than a single sport, you stay healthier. Yes, I, I, it's so interesting. And I I just, again, I, I wring my hands sometimes about all these players. I mean, not everybody can be a multiple sport yes. player. I get that. You know, I mean, you're not telling some kid that's, you know, not able to play football. He just doesn't have the skill set or the size, whatever it might be. But if you can, boy, should you. Well, you get four years, Jerry. You yes. Know, play sports, get, get in the choir, get in the school play, join the chess club. You, you get four years. You enjoy every experience you can. You know, I think we've seen that, you know, and I, I administrated soccer for so long, but when we saw the clubs come out, you know, related to the crew and all these others, Everybody thought, what's well, going to be the demise of, of high school soccer? No, it wasn't. Some of them went, but they came back. Yeah. Because they, you know, my gosh, it's, it's like you said. It's, you only have four years. Hopefully you only had four. I might have <laughs> five or six. But, but, um, but uh, yeah. you only have four under your current name. <laughs> and, you know, the fan bases and, you know, your friends. And, again, that's... We're both lucky. I mean, I've made career, yeah. a career out of high school, you know, sports, teaching, everything good about it. Free throw. 
by Plyman is point nine for him. He can become a double figure scorer if he can knock this one down. Bit of a struggle at the free throw line for him this evening. This will be his seventh attempt, and he has made three of them tonight. But he didn't get the double figures and push the lead back to 10 as well. This will be a three ball out of the corner by Dews, and he nailed it. First basket for Alex Dews tonight's a three ball. And yeah, it's what? Called a timeout, I think. Well, if he reached across the line yes. and swatted the ball out of the uh, the offensive player's hand, but I think we had a timeout and Botkins ahead of that. Is that correct? Yes, I think that's what it was. And that back official that was closest to the bench, he's the one that called the timeout. So. Okay, Jerry, I want to bounce something off of you. One of my pet peeves. You inbound the basketball, it takes you eight seconds. You haven't gotten the ball over midcourt in 10 seconds, you call timeout. Yes. You ought to get two seconds. Yes. You, 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 instead of being yes, rewarded, right it gives you 10 I full seconds again. If, if there were any rule change that uh, I could make as the rules are, that, that would be it. Yeah, I, you know, and that's interesting you say that because, I mean, historically, timeouts were not designed yeah. to be used as a advantage, you know, uh, a game gamesmanship. It just weren't. They were designed for rest. I know that you know, we use them for a lot of things, but you're right. That's that's an extreme. You have done a great job defending for eight seconds and you don't get anything right. out of it. That, that, there's a tip ball and it eventually comes up to Meyer. He's trapped at midcourt. That's not a good spot to be in. We're going to get a held ball. And he gets it. I think it's the purple team, isn't it? I believe so. I yes. think it is. It's 47.3 seconds to go, and they got the lead at seven. Fort Recovery trying to make one last run in this one. You know, you hit here quick, and it's a whole different game. You get a three, or you get something going to the lane, or you draw contact. Here's Patch inside. His little runner bounces in. Patch has got eight in the game, and we're at five. And Botkins will take a timeout. We're going to take a timeout also. 42.4 to go. Black is up five. You're watching high school basketball on WOSM. We're back at Bacchus with tonight's scoreboard. It's been presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone. Proud supporter, supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Scoreboard has been cut to a five-point lead for Botkins. And here comes that full-court pressure again. Well, this is where they're going to try very hard if you're Botkins to get the ball in Carter Plyman's hands. And there's a bounce pass in. We're going to get a foul pretty quick. Got a lot of big trap going on. And, well, we got the ball slammed off a defender, but we also timeout. got a Botkins timeout, this time with 38.7. And I'm looking at the board. I think they have one left. But they don't put timeouts on the board here, do they? No. In my, uh, my meager work at things like that, I think they have one left, but I'd, we'll see how this one plays out. Good trap on the sideline, got just what they wanted. Yeah, no, it was. No, nobody reached it and fouled. And I, I thought, you know, they're gonna play defense first and, you know, foul second, because if they can get a quick one, like I said, you know, whether it's a two or a three, they're right there. I think each team has a timeout remaining. They are not on the scoreboard here, so we're going to rely on my sometimes highly unofficial notes. That spot, they're going to take the ball out of bounds. That's not a good spot no, to take it isn't. That's a very difficult area to inbound the ball from. Trigger, 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 and finally they find Plyman, and he's going to be, nope, I thought Randall was going to foul him. He did not. Here's the foul right there that will go to Rick Toby as we're at 33 seconds. And that's what they are going to—they were going to try to do, you know, play defense, try to get the steal, and if you don't, it's in the quarter court, then you're going to foul. There's Ryland Paul, who has eight points all here in the second half and has made both of his free throws just a moment ago. Stalley Hustle Award winner coming up when this one comes to an end. The stat page says he's a 44% free throw shooter. Not by way looks no, tonight. No, it doesn't. He has been dead center on three, and see if he does it again. If he's a 44% yeah. free throw shooter, he spent a lot of time over Christmas vacation right. at the free throw line. <laughs> Got a good stroke. 
And here's a move to the goal. The foul will occur before the shot can be taken by Holman. This will go to J.J. Meyer. Troy Holman will go to the free throw line. He is one for four there this evening and has three points tonight. And a chance to get two with the clock stopped. The lead is at seven. And that one does not go for him. He's a 57% free throw shooter who has struggled a bit there this evening. And what do we got? Lane violation is going to go get somebody wearing the purple jersey yep. anyway, even though he missed it. Plyman will be fouled immediately by Holman, I believe. Let's see who they give it to. That is correct. Troy now has three fouls and will send Carter Plyman to the free throw line. He's got 10 points in the game. Two for four from the foul line here in this quarter. And even though Paul has been a great free, uh, free throw shooter too throughout this game, now again, you're trying to get that ball into Carter Plyman's hands. Yeah, you want it in the hands of a big, strong guy. Yeah. If he gets a little bit of contact and it's not called, right. he makes, and he's a good free throw shooter as well, and he's a senior with experience. So right. He's got the whole package. Second free throw. Made that one as well. That gets him to 12 this evening and puts the lead back at nine. Rammel, deep three. And it's tipped out of bounds by a white jersey. Riggs Toby was in there doing a little bit of pressure work. Yeah. That's happened a lot this evening. And you just tell him, don't foul, don't foul yeah. if, you're, if you're Bodkins. Here's Rammel. And he's gonna work in the lane, ball's kicked, he gets it back and then scores. 17 for him tonight. Got 15 in the second half, and there's a foul that'll go against Patch. Well, you knew Kale uh, Ramble averaging 24.6 a game wasn't going to be held in check the entire game. He's got 15 in half number two. 17 for the game for the senior. Well, you know, that was a great job by Dose at that time. You know, gets the ball in that corner, tough spot, rather than throw it and, you know, just heave it because he really didn't have anybody open. He was under a lot of pressure. He kept it knowing they were going to follow him. 10.8 to go. Dosik makes the first free throw. That is his first point tonight. Now his second. Here's Rammel. Nine-point lead. Rammel for three, deep three. And Plyman will rebound. And ball will go to Fort Recovery. No. Yeah, it should I be. thought it would. Yes. <laughs> Plyman was going to try to try to get the ball inbounds. Good for him. <laughs> Little zone this time on the inbounds pass. Patch for three. And this one will come to an end. Big scoring second half for both teams, but Botkins scores more than Fort Recovery, and they will take a 52-43 victory. Jerry and I will be back with postgame show after this. We're watching high school basketball on WOSA. We're back at Botkins. The Trojans have taken a 52-43 victory tonight over the Fort Recovery Indians. Our first order of business is to present our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. Check out the WSN YouTube page for the highlights of tonight's winner. And Jerry, after a short conference, didn't take long to figure this one out, the 6'2 senior Brant Berger. Yes, you know, our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. And, you know, you, you look at players, I mean, I'm sure that you know, both sides of this, you know, whether you're Fort Recovery and say, where did this kid come from? He's averaging 3.1 a game. And also, if you're on the uh, Botkin side, you're saying, you know, this time of year, you want kids to step up. And it's just one more player down the road that people have to defend. Yeah. And that helps everybody else. Changed so, the game. You shot him out of the zone. Yes. And, uh, you know, we talk about such a low scoring first half. And then all of a sudden, the whole complexion of the game changed, like you said, taking them out of the zone, taking Fort Recovery out of that zone that was so effective. And boy, you beat it with good shooting, and he did it. Fort Recovery will drop to 8-3. and three. They remain at 2-1 and one in the MAC. They had quarter scores tonight of 7-4, 14-18. They were led in scoring by Kale Rammel. He had 17-11 for Rex Leverett. Nine of those came in the first half, eight for Daniel Patch. On the other side, they had quarter scores for Botkins of 5, 8, 20, and 19. 
They were led tonight by Brant Berger Bur at 18 points a game off from the three-point line. 10 for Ryland Paul, 12 for Carter Plyman. The Botkins Trojans will go to 6-4 and four on the season, and they will remain 3-2 and two in the Shelby County Athletic League. I want to thank our sponsors this evening. That has been our scoreboard sponsor tonight, Wabash Mutual Telephone. And of course, Sally Insurance for presenting our Hustle Award winner. We thank the athletic director here, Brad Bergman. Red yes. Medicine at the door, Jerry. Yes. Another well, one of the really good ones. Yes, he is. What good people they are here. And, you know, he did a great job. Brad made sure we were all taken care of. He absolutely did. We want to thank our people here tonight in the gym. That would be Jacob O'Neill and Stephen McNeil. They did the camera and audio work for us tonight. Back at the station, Megan Sherrick will edit this one together. Botkins Trojans go to 6-4 in the season with a 52-43 win. You've been watching high school basketball on WOSN.